see you come in. Did she fill out her form? She just start? Yes. So sit up and let's get, I, I'm, you have to fill out a form. I want to monitor how people react. See, I want to monitor how we help people or not. And also I think strength okay. muscles will help my lower so, back. Mm -hmm. But that's another goal I have. Yeah. This portion, like practicing how much you're practicing, applies to when you come once a week. You're, we're coming every day, so just ignore these okay. two. But put your name, the date, and the rest just down to that line. And then you'll fill it out at the end so we can know if we've helped or hurt you, if we need to modify your program. And I like your earrings. Those are great earrings. A lot of people come to yoga because of some problem. And other people come because they maybe heard Iyengar yoga can help your knee pain, your low back, your neck and shoulders, your headaches. Ultimately, the goal of yoga is liberation, freedom. So when you um, come to yoga because of a physical ailment or a physiological or psychological problem, um, yoga, yes, can help that. All yoga is therapeutic. Oh, it's my third time, uh, uh, this, uh, in Urbana, and it's uh, uh, very useful for any Iyengar teacher, because uh, Lois is uh, not only the famous teacher, but she knows a lot of things, and not uh, only knows, but she knows um, exactly, uh, profoundly the things, and uh, uh, she is one of the best uh, teachers who know how uh, to correct people, how to do a sequence uh, connected with some problems uh, with the health and so on. Team Andre, you're also going to give neck and shoulder pain. She's got neck and shoulder pain. So see now these ropes should be on each side, each side of that knot so it's not going to choke you. Okay, now turn your toes in and heels out. Now step forward, step forward and look back to the floor. No, no, don't let go of the hands so fast. Yeah, hold the black and gold rope. Step forward, lift your chest and look back for the floor. Lift the chest. Now walk a little bit more forward, a little bit. Now turn the toes in, heels out. Now reach your hands down. Can you interlock your fingers or you're too tight? Go get the, um, get a dowel, get a dowel. Okay, hold this in your hands. So the elbows go straight. Go, wait, wait, relax your hands so you don't fight me. Okay, now do the other thing. Okay, all right, now lift here and look back for the floor. Roll the front of the thighs in. Do you see, I'm finding her stiff part. This is loose, look underneath. Look underneath, look here at my hand. This is loose, this is stiff. This is stiffer, this is loose. I have to go to what's stiff. And the chin goes down and the sternum goes up and you look with your eyes open to the floor and lift your chest up, work with me. Okay, now let go. Hold the rope with your hands, step back. Lift the chest up. Look forward now. Lift the back of the head. Take a breath. We're going to repeat it. I'm going to have Andre tie it. So look back, look back. Lift your chest. Get your chest higher than your arms. Now reach your arms. Now hold the rod. OK, now Andre, you do. You stand there. Now you make a fist. Is he making it in the right way? And put your heel of the hand only, not on that part of the throat, only here, on this bone. If it's here, it's soft tissue. It doesn't feel good. Now lift her up where she's stiff and push down. Is that the same? And you look to me. You look to me. That, look for the floor now. Is it the same or is it, don't overdo. Is it the same or different? It's different. How is it different? Wait, wait, stop. How is it different? I think it's harder. Don't go so hard. Feel her body where she, forget, you're strong, so don't just use your strength. Is that better? Okay. And you reach your arms down. Oh, as wide as your knees. Okay, now let go of the rod. Just twice is enough. You hold this. No, she can get up on her own. You step back. You hold this. Okay, now the next part. For me, this is the third time when I came to study with Lois. Uh, and I found it's very effective. And uh, I study a lot from here. 
uh, and she is well known in Russia like a therapist. <laughs> That's why people is coming to, to study with her here. I think Russians like uh, systematic, and Dianger yoga is very systematic, and it's real work and help people, and uh, this is the reason why it's popular. Her students also help us not to study because they have experience, they can tell you, oh, you are wrong, <laughs> it's something wrong here, <laughs> or oh, oh, this is good, yes. So it's a way of studying to work with people. Yes, this workshop uh, was uh, very well organized. We don't waste uh, our time and we uh, have really practice. Uh, it was very useful. We worked with uh, real students uh, with real problems because um, uh, I'm interested in therapy uh, direction before and um, I have some uh, information about uh, this, I have some knowledge about this, but I, I don't, uh, didn't have practice. She prepared us to be in Cocton, in contact with these students, and she prepared these uh, students to be in contact with us. They are very open <laughs> person and um, ki kind. They uh, was kind to us. Uh, they forgive us for some mistakes. <laughs> You have Kelly? Yeah. Yes. Are you starting with prone shavasan? Mm -hmm. Prone shavasan. Mm -hmm. Prone shavasan. Mm -hmm. What what was your first pose? Ah, it was shoulder shavasan. Shoulder shavasan. Okay. Because she has a knot here, okay. prone is better. Okay. Actually, what about that one that you normally do? Does that, that help us? Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Was... Kelly will show you how she sets it up. Okay. She'll show you. Which is fine cuz when I'm in Pune, you know, when I get handed somebody and they already know what they're doing, I'm like, I'm going to learn from them. I'm like, OK, show me how you do it, and then watch, and then see if you can help make any adjustments. And if not, then just let her be for five minutes, OK? See, all these edges are loose. Well, not that one. But make these edges all the thick edges. So get the hip bones lower down. It should feel like the tailbone is dropping. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Now she feels. Now you can fix her ankles. Okay, so now we still have to fill that dip. Do you have back low back ache, Kelly? Yeah, I have okay. vertebrae. Okay. All right, so did you roll her front of the thighs in? Let, let me see you do roll the front of the thighs in. Yeah, that's it. Okay, and what else could you, no, not to do that. No? Yeah, actually she could go wider. Yeah, so you did that fine, but she moved her legs. I'm just doing it again. You, you can do that, but it's not necessary. They're already rolled out. What you need, the next step is to do this. And just to feel, when you, whenever you adjust someone like that, this is a sensitive area. All areas for people who are unwell are sensitive. But here especially, you have to feel the skin first, then the muscle, then the bone. Don't just go in there like a... A sailor. <laughs> so skin, muscle, bone. Then I can move everything. And then I see she breathed. She actually is, there was a release of the breath. So that really gives me information. OK. Now we can place, we can fill this dip. It's now a smaller dip. So we fill that dip with just that much blanket. That's all. So I fill that dip. She's got no buttock. So this is good. Then you put the weight. Actually, a plate weight is better on this part of the body than a sandbag. OK. So you always stand centered. 
use your own body weight so you don't hurt yourself. Put the weight on. It's a little. And then say, is that good? Do you want it higher or lower? Good. Good. Okay. And she could stay the full five minutes now, even though she's been here for a while. She's a regular practitioner. If she wasn't, I would take her out after three minutes because it took so long to mess around with her to get this going. So a new person, if you're messing around with them so long, don't leave them so long in the pose because then it becomes uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any extra props now, put away because the room is crowded. I think my message, I hope they got it, was to feel the skin, the muscle, and the bone, not just to um, think, oh, I have to move somebody a certain way. Get a good sense of the tissue and the person you're working with, and you know, get a get a feeling for you know what's inside and what you're feeling, and be sensitive. Develop a sensitivity. And then also, not to get caught up in the props. It's not about the props, it's about the classic pose that you know has beneficial effects. Certain poses have beneficial effects, like Shirshasana, the head balance, is great for the brain and all the systems of the body. And perhaps a student needs to do Shirshasana for the brain, as we were working on the brain. Um, but not to think of, okay, I'm going to modify their pose this way because I know it would be correct, but think of the shape. Well, first think of the student and what you know you can or can't do with that student. Um, maybe they have fear. They can't do sheer shasana at all and you don't want to create tension. So put them in Prasarita Padottanasana which you can lead to the head down, or Adho Mukha Svanasana, or Dvipada Vipurita Dandasana, and then try the Shir Shasana. But also it's not about the props, it's about stepping back and getting the big picture, because you're getting caught up in adjusting someone, you know, and not really taking a step back and looking at it. So we took a step back to look, and I hope they get that message. Very simple. to find uh, the more simple way to work with them, not think about that, oh, I have to do a lot of things, blah, 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 blah. But just to see that you can do very simple things with such kind of people, and it will help them. She's working on cording from um, cancer treatment. The arm gets, the muscles get really hard, the tissue. And she only has a little window of opportunity. I think the doctors think it closed, but we're not closing that window. <laughs> you know what, Lois? The other thing that I can see it helps if you want to is that the pectoral muscles get okay. tender after radiation. This is stretching them yeah. out and making it better. Wow, excellent. So, uh, just so you know, mm -hmm. for women who have radiation, the year following, these muscles can be really tender, and this really helps. Okay. Great. See, so they're both doing twists, but different ways. This is Bhadad Vajasana. Sometimes you don't even know what it is that is the classic pose because it's taken so far from it. Can you reach your right hand a little more on top of that? That's it. Even more? Great. <laughs> leg are we doing? The, the, bed. the bad side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, this is much better. Much better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, but what you have to do, see, is keep this heel a little to the right. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hold the rope? Yes. Okay, so hold the rope. I'm pushing this in. You can put your hands on the wall. 
Yeah. And we're going to make this a tighter. Just say stop if it's too much. You pull the outer hip down. Mm -hmm. Now you lift, you have to lift your outer shin and outer thigh up. Not let her do that part. You hold the rope separate in each hand okay. and pull the outer rope more. Be, feel the skin, the muscle, the bone. I think that's really important to get so you don't just yank somebody. Watch your foot, Oksana. Mm -hmm. Because I want you now, this is Marie Chiasana one. I want you to reach, you're keeping your hips at the wall. I want you to reach forward with your hands to the trestle. And keep this right arm inside. Oh, it's like Marie Chiasana, okay. Yeah. yeah, see it's just like Marie Chiasana, it's Utita Marie Chiasana. the knee up, right? Yeah, you try to keep the outer shin and outer thigh up. Roll the outer knee in. Now, any amount, can you turn your left heel out? That's good, very good. Oh, yes. yes. Okay, easy. this is really going to be helpful. Yeah. And you pull, Oksana, the outer hip down more. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you can even bend the elbows to see if you can go further more. Bend them to the side. Yes, if you can go bend any amount, you can go further, you can reach the hands further. Okay, like and then change the sides because that's straight enough. Back. Okay. Straight back. Okay. Well, no, it rounds. Yeah, it rounds. But Let me show. Come down. And bring it up. Huh? Metka resist when I pull. Don't resist. Well, Resistance <laughs> is futile. Okay, come down. I'm going to well, show you something. That, I don't even know that I'm resisting. And yeah. Slowly. Now she shakes, so don't hold her a long time. Step down uh -huh. off your uh -huh. throne. I'm just going to show you for a moment. Can I move this out? Because I only need the block. Yeah. Because you were confused about your back. Yeah. Don't be confused about your back because this is Marie Chiasana 1. Okay. So, it, it, it has to be, yeah. okay. do you see? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. And it, it can, and the knee can come out. No, I should no. keep it up, but don't yeah. tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
it wasn't pressure. It's just what the way, how can I do uh, much more uh, easy, much more faster, much more better for the people. I am tired a little bit uh, because of uh, I need to translate uh, quickly in my mind from Russian to English, from English to Russian. But that's a good experience in uh, all stuff, in language, in therapy, and how to be the student. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, really nice week. So happy. Has nothing to do with me, <laughs> even though I am proud of her. She's a um, six years survivor, five years survivor of pancreatic cancer, the same um, cancer that Steve Jobs had. I think Patrick Swayze. And she is doing wonderful. She's clean. Let's, this bolster is a little soft. Um, well, there. Now we have to build up here. She's had a Whipple surgery. They left wires in her, probably thinking she wasn't going to live anyway, so why don't we just leave these wires in her. She had to have another surgery. They, they gave her two more surgeries. They gave her MRSA in the hospital. I think even more. She's got a tall, tight front body. So let's, and then for her neck, we need that blanket. We, we'll need more for her neck. One more blanket, one more blanket. There's blankets there. No, let her get it, Betsy. Okay, let her get it. Blanket. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, Betsy, you better get it. <laughs> Blanket. Ah, blanket. Plank. Ah, the plank, blank. Blanket. I'm not here. <laughs> okay, Betsy, go ahead and sit. If it doesn't feel right, tell me, because I haven't done this with you for a while. Okay, and then we support her head and neck when she lies back. Oh, the head's going to go back too much. Get another blanket. Quick, blanket. quick, quick. Blanket, quick, blanket, quick. Hi. <laughs> fold it small, fold, fold, like this. Okay. Again. Sure. Yes. Put it. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay. Now press your feet, go a little bit more towards your head side. Oh, this should be under your neck, wait. Okay, let your shoulders come down. Let the neck be supported. Does this feel okay? Yeah, it feels good. Put something under her heels. Get a blanket. Just fold it and put it under her heels. Fold, fold, fold. Yeah. Bend your knees again. No, it's not enough. She's stiff. Bend your knees, Betsy. Is that enough? Okay. <laughs> Do you need this? You, you put it where it feels best because okay. you know how it feels best. And imagine, I'm not going to stand here with my hand the whole time, but imagine a hand is here. Okay. And bring the skin mm -hmm. there. And this, this shoulder has to move that way. The side chest has to lengthen. Think of the inner ribs and move, elongate the inner ribs towards your head. Gentle. Okay, it's already happening. Okay? All right. Explain to them that in about five minutes, I will need help getting out. Four minutes, come and get me to help her out. Yeah, Lois has guided me through a long, difficult journey of healing. Uh, the kind of cancer I had was deadly, pancreatic cancer. And the surgery that I had lasted 14 hours. They took out my pancreas, a lot of my intestine and stomach, my bile um, duct. After my surgery, I had MRSA, which is a terrible infection. I was in the hospital for two months, and I couldn't do chemo. Uh, and as a result of that surgery, I then developed um, uh, a lot of different sets of problems. I have diabetes, I have, which cre creates its own problems. I got pinched nerve damage, atrophy of the muscles. <laughs> it's a long and boring list. but. She just kept uh, adapting and helping me 
not, not give up. I I'm, wouldn't have given up anyway, but I wouldn't have known what direction to go. She knows all about Iyengar's processes, but at the same time, uh, she can adapt for people who are in pain. Uh, there was a time where I could only do pranayama, which is a kind of breathing, yoga breathing, which became for me a kind of meditation. And so this is both a physical healing, an emotional healing, uh, or a kind of spiritual healing. And I practice every day. She has taught me um, different coping mechanisms for all the different problems. I can get through pain without drugs. Uh, and another kind of concrete example is that when I used to be six feet tall and I have osteoporosis and I had gotten down to five, ten and a half, which is tall for some people, but it represented an inch and a half loss for me. And now, when I went back to the doctor recently, I was back up to 5'11". So I've gained, because of the very specific exercises she's given to correct my posture, uh, which again was being uh, distorted by these uh, muscular um, uh, destruction, really, that, that happened with the surgery. I almost died. and. What I think yoga did for me was not give me hope of a longer life, but to make the most of the life that I have. So that every day is a blessing, and every day I use it to the best of my ability. And that's what yoga has helped me with. Yoga does not cure cancer, but it can help the healing process. If you're recovering from cancer, it can help um, when you are going through chemo, chemotherapy, radiation, the side effects of that. It can help with nausea. There's research that shows this. It's not magic at all. When I say I don't know how it's working, I just know it works, it's not magic. Sometimes I joke and people are like, yeah, they are miraculously cured. It surprises me too. I'm like, that's unfair. It doesn't always magically cure me. <laughs> you know, but um, for some people, especially who are new to yoga, it really fixes things fast. It's hard to explain how it works because it's experiential. I could describe and describe and describe, and I do describe a lot in my, my books um, um, how some things work. And sometimes I don't know how it works, and, I'll, and I don't care. You know, it's like, if it's working, if it's helping you to be a better person, to be healthy, um, is there a reason that's needed? This is um, a really fundamental, fundamental book and fundamental um, 
instruction and very beautiful photos and uh, many people uh, around uh, um, uh, f from our country not have a great teacher great but this is book is a real beautiful teacher and Aingar uh, said um, uh, that good um, Good book is more more better than bad teacher. <laughs> yes, and uh, um, Lois books it's real good teachers. I know uh, uh, all the pages from her women's book, and uh, I work with this book and uh, with programs from this book. I I'm, I like it. I like her books really. It's uh, it's a good explainings in uh, these books. There are very good photos, detailed photos, and I think uh, even if person uh, can't understand English, he, he may help himself uh, just uh, look in these photos. The experience was transformational. I came in here having not been able to walk basically for three and a half months because uh, of a knee problem or three knee problems all together in one knee. And by the end of the week, I'm climbing up and down stairs with uh, no problems. And even though they're learning, the teachers are learning therapy, they're all real yoga teachers and the majority of them know their stuff and while there might be a couple of adjustments that aren't as perfect as Lois's, um, you know, they're, they're doing really good work in making me feel better. Yoga is the thing that has healed me before when I've been sick and so um, to come to a place where somebody like Lois is, is overseeing the program, I know it's top-notch uh, instruction. We just took a walk on uneven pavement, but I think more importantly, we climbed up to that tower in the gardens and I went upstairs without my knees popping, creaking, or no piercing pain. And I was able to come downstairs with no pain. And I have not been able to do that for four, five, six months. And that's one week of yoga. It's pretty impressive. It's just amazing. Yeah, it's a good week. Yeah, it's a good week, so you're but it goes, yeah, I'm very happy and it goes to show um, <laughs> the power of yoga and the, and the need to practice every day. It's not just coming to class. Class is for learning. You have to practice. <laughs> um, and the teachers are making progress, yeah. so I have to do less work. <laughs> to cry. Yeah. I'm going to miss them. I love the Russians. <laughs> Thank you. There. Thank you. So you go to shear shots and then shear shots in two. And then one hand at a time you hold the hook. It's what Guruji does a lot. You see him and Puna doing this. It's not just because he likes to do no-handed sheer shasana. It's great on the brain. He's, you know, when you're older, your brain atrophies too. So, the, and he stands on his head still an hour this way. That's why his brain, he, he joked with me that his brain used to be like a goose train. That's his word. Now it's faster than a jet engine. <laughs> Are you on your head okay? All right. So are you brave enough to try this? If you, if you don't feel confident, your helper can hold your thigh. Okay, so you feel confident. And then you come back down the way you came up. Let's do it, let's take turns. 